first worship service of the month of January and of the year 2021. I pray that the living God will make the year a year of testimony for you in Jesus' name. If you remember before the old year passed away, I told us that the normal 30, 31 days of fasting we normally do will not be done this year because this year is our year of testimony. Everything you have prayed for, the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. That does not mean that we are not going to fast in between. But we are just going to wait on the Lord, hold on to the word of the Lord, believe the word of the Lord, and live by that word. Because God has said he is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Whatsoever he has promised, you don't have to suffer yourself before he does it. This year is a year of performance. And the Lord will visit us in Jesus' name. Again, understand we are not saying we are not fasting this month. Yesterday was our prayer and fasting day. But we don't want to make fasting like a ritual, a religious thing that they do everywhere, no matter what happens. There must be a reason for fasting. Prayer is something that must be done regularly. We should pray without season. The Bible did not say fast without season. What are we enjoined to do? We're enjoined, we are commanded, we are instructed to live a holy life, a righteous life, and an upright life. That automatically makes us a child of God. And as a child unto the Father, he cares for his own. He watches over his own. He provides for his own. He preserves his own. And that God will be our God in Jesus' name. And that is why the one thing that will qualify you the one thing that will qualify me, the one thing that will qualify all of us for all the blessings of the Lord is holiness and righteousness. And that is why if there is anything you want to do this year, it's not about fasting. It's about holiness. It's about righteousness. Because holiness and righteousness automatically qualifies you for all the blessings of the Lord. And that is why today we are beginning the year with a message on holiness, purity, and righteousness. Shall we pray? Father, we come before you. Eternal God, we worship, honor, exalt, and adore you. Thank you, Father, for keeping us all through the year 2020. In spite of the challenges of the year, the problems of the year, the pandemonious of the year, the pandemic of the year, the afflictions of the year, and the hundreds of thousands of people that died within the year, you kept us true and true, O oh Lord, and you brought us into this year, 2021. We hand over ourselves unto you and pray that the grace to live for you and do your will be given to us in Jesus' name. Speak to us now. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'm talking on the subject of holiness, God's command for all ages. Holiness, God's command for all ages. That simply means irrespective of the age or the dispensation that you find yourself. God's demand, command, instruction is that you and I be holy. Now, we went through the previous year 
2020. And of course, we all saw all that happened within the year and how many lives were lost before the year was over. In reality, within that year, over one million people died in this country, out of which 330-something were connected with COVID-19 alone. That means there were people that still died of heart attack, nothing related with COVID. People that died because of drug overdose. And as a matter of fact, statistics tells us that the number of those that died of overdose was quite a lot, way higher than those that were killed by COVID-19. There were those that died in the course of accidents. How about those that died in the process of childbearing and other diseases, cancer, terminal disease, liver problem, kidney problem, and so on and so forth. Over a million people died actually before that year was over. But God kept you and God kept me. It is for a purpose. And the earlier we understand the plan and the purpose of God for our lives, the better. First Corinthians chapter 10, I look at verses 1 through to 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 6. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the clouds and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, but with many of them, they left Egypt, they didn't die in Egypt. When the firstborns in Egypt were dying, they didn't perish with the plagues in Egypt. They came out of Egypt, they went through the Red Sea, and they crossed over to the other side, and the Egyptians that followed after them were all perished, and they got into the wilderness, and they drank of that water from the smitten rock, and they ate spiritual bread, spiritual food, the food of angels from heaven, and they witnessed a lot of miracles, sicknesses and infirmities were far from them. The Bible says in verse 5, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things were our examples. To the intent, we should not lose after evil things as they lost it. I pray that having escaped the death, the disease, the destruction of 2020, we will not be overtaken in the wilderness of 2021 in Jesus' name. With many of them, they bear the name of the Lord with many of them. They had the ark of God with them with many of them. They had the anointed man of God, Moses with them, and Joshua with them with many of them. They saw the miracles and the signs and the wonders, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. Not well pleased. I pray that this year, 2021, and beyond, God will be pleased with your life. God will be pleased with your action. God will be pleased with your behaviors. God will be pleased with your conduct and character in Jesus' name. It is not enough for you to come to church. It is not enough for you to say you are a Christian. It is not enough for you to sing Amazing Grace. It is not enough for you to cram the Bible. It is not enough for you to pray. It is not enough for you to fast. Uh, you must be holy unto the Lord. Holy unto the Lord. Holy unto the Lord. 
can two work together except they agree no it is not possible if i must work with god if you must work with god and god is holy on one hand i must be holy on the other side if god is holy on one hand and i am unholy on the other hand then we cannot work together and so if you want the best of god for your life the peace of god in your life the joy of the lord in your life the grace of god in your life the presence of god in your life the provisions and the protection of god in your life then be holy leviticus chapter 11 verses 44 and 45 for i am the lord your god ye shall therefore sanctify yourself and ye shall be holy for i am holy neither shall ye defy yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth for i am the lord that bringeth you up out of the land of egypt to be your god ye shall therefore be holy for i am holy chapter 20 of leviticus verse 7 sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy for i am the lord your god and ye shall be holy unto me for i the lord am holy and have severed you and have separated you from other people that ye should be mine the lord is saying Yes, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Yes, you are in America, but you are not an American. What I mean by that is, you are not a sinful American, a carnal American, a worldly American, a godless American. America is just a place in the world. And so, understand, you want to be a godly American, a holy American, a righteous American, a God-fearing American. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Whether you are here in America or any other part of the world that you may find yourself and you see the lasciviousness of the land, the immorality of the land, the godlessness of the land, the behaviors with impurity in the land, you want to be sure that as for you, and I want to be sure that as for me, that holiness is our watchword. Holiness is our song. Holiness be, uh, 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 become it our, our life, whether in the house or outside of the house, we maintain holiness because without holiness no man shall see the lord in the old testament before the law it was holiness in the old testament during the law it was holiness in the new testament holiness the time of the kings holiness the times of the prophets holiness now politics or no politics holiness uh, unto the lord unto the lord the law will keep you holy the law will make us holy hebrews chapter 7 verse 26 for such an high priest became us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens separate from sinners in the world but separate from the sinners uh, living with others but separate from the sinners uh, and made higher than the heavens uh, and then you will come again to another part of the new testament uh, first peter chapter 2 verse 9 first peter chapter 2 verse 9 please do me a favor you may not be able to get to everything but please get your pen and paper write all the references down go back home and live your life like the Berean Christians uh, sit down and study the world sit down and examine the world sit down and read them and pray them in until the perfect work of grace is perfected in your life in Jesus name that first Peter again chapter 2 verse 9 but ye are a choosing generation a royal priesthood 
a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You have been called by the Lord, separated by the Lord, and so you cannot live your life like any other person. You cannot behave like every other person. You cannot talk like every other person. You cannot dress like every other person. You cannot get married like any other person. You cannot conduct your business like any other person. May I say this? You cannot run the church service like any other church and every other church because not all men fear the Lord. Not all men are really serving the Lord. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1 verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance, but as he as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Verse 16. Because it is written, Be ye holy, everybody. For I am holy. For I am holy. The biblical holiness is a life of constant, consistent, and continuous obedience to God and his word. Constant, consistent, and continuous obedience to the word of the Lord. Remember again, holiness. God's command to all ages, for all ages, in all ages. We then must live our life to God's glory, loving and living for Christ every day, living the life of the crucified. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. So you want to be sure that January, of course, has passed. Uh, the first January, January 1st has passed. Second has passed. Today is the third of January. The number three stands for divinity. You want to be sure that on this blessed day, glorious day, that you are living your life for the name, the glory, and the honor of the Lord. You're loving and living for Christ. You're living the life of the crucified, crucified, crucified. You crucify the flesh. You're laboring while looking at the cross. No matter what is happening, as you labor in life, whether laboring for the Lord or laboring for what to eat and what to drink, you have the cross before you. Like so the songwriter say, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. You want to be sure the cross of Christ is before you. And understand, the cross is an emblem of shame. It's an emblem of ridicule. It's an emblem of rejection. It's an emblem of sorrow. It's an emblem of sign. And you want to have that cross before you, living a life of soberness, a life of sobriety, a life of humility, a life of meekness, a life of obedience, and complete and total submission unto the Lord all through this year so that it can be well with you and I pray it will be well with you. As we live this year, we want to live a life of liberty from the law of carnality. We want to let go and let God in our lives. You don't want to live a life of unforgiving spirit. You don't want to live in bitterness of heart. You don't want to live in hatred against anyone. You don't want the devil to have any occasion against you. You want to let go and you want to let God. No matter what any man has done, no matter what anyone has done, forgive from your heart and your heavenly father will forgive you in Jesus' name. This year, 2021, you want to lure yourself down and lift up Christ Jesus. 
You want to crucify your ego and magnify your maker, your savior, your Lord. You want to lift up Jesus Christ anywhere you go. Everywhere you go, they must see the banner of the Lord in your life. And then you want to daily, daily long for purity of heart, pure conscience. Acts chapter 24 verse 16 says, Herein do I exercise myself that I might have a conscience void of offense both towards God and towards man. I look at three points as we consider the message on holiness, God's command for all ages. One, God's demand for practical holiness, not theoretical holiness, not imaginary holiness, but practical holiness. God's demand for practical holiness. Point two, gracious deposit for purity and holiness. Gracious deposit, all that we need in life, God has made available unto us. And finally, graceful demonstration of personal holiness. Understand? Graceful demonstration. Demonstration that is by grace, that is with grace. And this holiness is a personal holiness. The personal holiness of Abraham. The personal holiness of Enoch. The personal holiness of Peter. The personal holiness of Paul the Apostle. The personal holiness of Noah. The personal holiness that the world have no gainsaying about. Gracious demonstration of personal holiness. Come back to the first point. God's demand for practical holiness. God is asking you and asking me that we must make holiness our daily exercise. Make holiness our daily food. Make holiness our daily clothing. Make holiness our daily drink. Make holiness our first sight. Make holiness our primary desire in anything. And God is saying, if there is anything I need from you, I don't need your money. I really don't need your time, though they are all mine. I don't need your treasure, though they are all mine. And I give them unto you. But this one thing, my very nature, my very life, my very person, the person and the personality of holiness, I demand for him from you. If you must be mine, if you will be mine, if you will walk with me, if you will be called by my name, if you will live for the glory of my name, holiness is one thing I need from you. Holiness is one thing I need from the pastor. Holiness is one thing I need from the pew member, workers. Holiness I need. Leaders, holiness I need. Followers, holiness I need. Church as a whole, whether you're a worker, you're a member in the church, there is one thing that will qualify you for heaven. There is one thing that will get your name in the book of life. There is one thing that will make you to oh, prevail over the devil and the forces and the powers of darkness, and that is holiness. And that is holiness. And God will give it to you in Jesus' name. Psalm 24, from verse 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, nor sworn deceitfully. And look at the 15th chapter of that psalm, Psalm 15, Psalm 15, from verse 1. Lord, Lord, I'm not sure if you have gotten to that point in your life. And the way you call Lord, not just Lord, but Lord, it sinks deep into you. You want an attention. You do it with concentration. You do it with passion. You do it with emotion. There is a godly feeling, not earthly, carnal, sensual feeling. And then you do it with the hope of a glorious, godly, heavenly reply. 
Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh, God is replying. God is answering. Unless you go to God for a question, wait for an answer. Don't rush away from the presence of the Lord. Don't be in a haze. No matter how long it's going to take for you to get an answer, wait. Wait on the Lord. And I say, wait on the Lord. And the Lord came and he said, He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, not doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. He knows eyes, a vile person is contained, but he honoreth the Lord. He honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to use street, not taking advantage of people, not taketh reward against the innocent, not taking a bribe. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. The world may stand against you. Your family may stand against you. Your church may stand against you. Your job may stand against you. But, the Bible says, you do all these things, you will never be moved. Now I pray you will not be moved. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. If you love righteousness and you hate iniquity, there is something the world cannot give that God will give you. There will be an inner joy. There will be an inner peace. There will be an inner satisfaction in the midst of the tumors of the world, the, the, the commotions of the world. You will just know, even in the face of death, there is that joy that will be there that you are ready to meet your God. It's by righteousness. It's by holiness, not by competition with other people, not by wanting to live your life the way people out there. And because they minister, they preach, and maybe because their churches are growing. I'm not against such growth. We pray our churches will grow. If we have 10 times of the capacity of this whole sanctuary, I will still preach the same thing. Because the 10 times or even 100 times of the capacity of this sanctuary is still like a drop of water compared to the souls of men that should be saved. And so, no matter any, how big any church may be, nothing compared to the thousands of souls that are going to hell on a daily basis. Do I say on a daily basis? Every hour. Every minute. And the Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling me to get out of religion and come into righteousness. To get out of yourself and come into humble, meek life and relationship with the Lord. And that grace you need will be given unto you in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murder, drunkenness, rebellions, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things, tell me, shall not 
inherit the kingdom of God. You said, I am a preacher. Yes, you didn't stay away from those things, preacher. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. You said, I performed miracles and signs and wonders. Yes, because God is faithful to his word, Mr. Miracle Worker. Signs and wonders performer, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You say, I am a child of the pastor. I am a wife to the pastor, Mrs. Pastor, daughter, pastor's daughter, a son, pastor's son. Hear the word of the Lord. Except a man be born again, he will not enter the kingdom of God. And then you say, this pastor's wife is behaving this way. That pastor is acting that way. They are not your standard. They are not your model. The word of God is your model. The word of God is your standard. By it you will be judged. By it I will be judged. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. The Lord is calling you to a new life, a life of holiness and righteousness in such a way that when you look at yourself, you have a testimony, the first testimony you need. In your life this year, it's not the testimony of I bought a car. Many people have bought cars. It's not the testimony of I bought a house. Many have bought houses. It's not a testimony. I got promoted. I pray God will do all those for you. But the testimony, the testimony that where I used to be, I am there no more. Who I used to be, I am no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. The weakness I used to have in prayer, I have it no more. Now I am strong in prayer. Now I am committed unto the Lord. Now I am consecrated unto the Lord. Now I have the vision of heaven before my brow. And now I have the peace of God. I have the joy of the Lord. I have the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. The anger that used to take over me is gone. The hatred, the bitterness, the animosity, I won't take it. You won't agree. Everything is gone. You want to argue with me on anything, I leave it and let it go. It's going to be a year of testimony. A year of personal encounter with God in Jesus' name. Verse 22, still in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, is joy, is peace, is long-suffering, is gentleness, is goodness, is faith, is meekness, is temperance. Against such there is no law. There is no law. Holiness is a central theme that runs through the scripture. Holiness is not a dispensational doctrine, but an eternal command from the throne of grace. The tabernacle reflects the character of a holy God. This tabernacle, this tabernacle must reflect the character of a holy God. And the worship that is done from this tabernacle must be pure and must be holy. Because our God is a holy God. He is a holy Father. And the Holy Spirit is the Holy One. And he has called you. He has called me to be holy. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Listen to this. There was a privilege that the children of Israel had, the promise of Canaan. That gracious promise and privilege of entering the land of promise was withdrawn from Moses, from Aaron, and from the host of Israel. Because they did not sanctify and respect God. Sanctify the Lord in your hearts. In anything you do, in everything you do, honor the Lord, honor the Lord, honor the Lord. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 20 verse 12, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because you believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. 
I pray your reservation will not be withdrawn in Jesus' name. Number two, God's protection and preservation of the Israelites was lost when they commit and traded their holiness for pleasure with the daughters of Moab. Numbers, chapter 23, verses 8 to 10. How shall I cause whom God has not caused? Stop right there. Stop right there. Those of you that are daily praying against causes, there is nothing wrong with that, but don't dwell on that. You are daily praying against the powers of the witches and the wizards. There is nothing wrong with that, but don't dwell on that. Pay attention. If your life is right with God, you are automatically protected. If your life is right with God, if God be for us, who can be against us? There is nobody. Don't waste your time on those things. Because they will labor in vain. Balak wanted to cause Israel. He hired Balaam with a huge price. Cost them for me. And Balaam was going to do that because of greedy gain. But the covering of the Lord was upon the people while they were righteous, holy, and pure. Come with me in that journey. Numbers. Amen. Chapter 23, verse 8. How shall I cause whom God has not caused? Did you hear that? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the numbers of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his. Balaam, in an attempt to cause Israel, saw the great revelation, saw the protection of God, the power of God. He saw the righteousness of the living God and he declared, how can I cause whom the Lord has not caused? Pay attention here. Nobody can cause you if God has not caused you. But then, the same people that were kept and preserved and protected by the Lord when they didn't even know that a cause was coming, God stopped it. It didn't even take off. God prevented it from happening. And even Balaam himself, when he was trying to be stubborn and was going ahead because God told him, don't. And he declared, how can I? But then uh, Balak tried to persuade him. And then he now went back to God. Brothers and sisters, you know the will of God concerning that matter. You know the word of God concerning that matter. Why are you trying to twist the hand of the Lord? What are you looking for? God's perfect will or God's permissive will? And so, when Balaam went back to God, having had the instruction, God has spoken once, twice have I had.